Guys, you hear people talking about Daniel all the time, and you hear them talking about his prophecies for our day now, which is ridiculous whenever you read Daniel. If you read Daniel about the image that Nebuchadnezzar saw, the gold, the silver, the bronze, the iron, the iron and the clay, if you read it about uh, any of it, all of it, which kingdom came, and the abomination of desolation, all of these things were done by 70 AD. I've actually seen Daniel in the spirit before, and he came to me, and this is whenever I had a dream that Jesus already came back, and that's what set me on this whole path in the first place. I didn't know that this was some doctrine out there that people already knew that Jesus already came back, but I had a dream telling me that made me look into all this. I hear people talking about how the iron and the clay and the feeder for our day now and all these other things, but Daniel clearly... Even then, even in the second chapter, whenever he's talking to Nebuchadnezzar and he tells him the dream and the interpretation of it, he says that Nebuchadnezzar was the head of gold because the whole world was given into his hands from God and that he was the great king. And after him, a kingdom would arise more inferior to him. That's silver. That's the Persians. He said, after you, a kingdom will arise more inferior to you. And then a third kingdom, which is bronze. And then a fourth kingdom, which is iron. Whenever you even listen to the History Channel today, they call Rome the kingdom of iron. They call them the Iron Kingdom. They're the ones who discovered the iron and made everything out of iron, you know. And we're still in the Iron Age. I mean, it's it's never changed because we found out iron was so powerful, you know, and easy to come by. But so he says, if you read it, Daniel said that he was living at the time that Nebuchadnezzar was ruling, and then Balthazar, his son, or Balthazar, his son. And he said that Balthazar was going to be destroyed and that the kingdom would be delivered to the Persians that night. This is the second kingdom. This is the kingdom after Nebuchadnezzar. This is the kingdom after Babylon was Persia. And then he said under Darius, king of Persia, that Daniel excelled. And Daniel had visions under his reign. And then he told Darius and he told the Persians that Greece was going to come after them. And there would be a great king, Alexander the Great, obviously. And whenever Alexander the Great was destroyed, the kingdom would be divided into four kingdoms. That's exactly what happened in history. So now you're already down to the um, bronze in the stomach and the leg, right? And that's Greece. And after them, another kingdom, which is a kingdom of iron. And this kingdom was definitely Rome. All right, Greece was divided into four parts. Rome became ruler after that. And they were also four different <clears throat> sections. So the iron and the clay and the feet and all those things, that already happened. And then in those days of that kingdom, Jesus came. There's no way that Daniel lived through the Persians, told him Greece was coming. So we've already got the gold, the silver, the bronze. We've got Babylon, Persia, and uh, Greece. We already saw those. Just before Daniel died, he told him about uh, Greece coming and ruling, and that's what happened. And then after that, the Iron Kingdom, Rome came. There's no way that those happened within those years, and then 2,000 years later, more than 2,000 years later, now we have the iron and the clay and the feet and the iron kingdom. This happened in Rome. It happened in their day. Daniel clearly says it throughout the whole book that it happened then. It's done. Jesus came, cut out of the mountain without hands, destroyed those kingdoms. He is king. Look at his accolades. Jesus is king. He's been, this has been his kingdom this whole time. The, the dates are set by him. He's the most, uh, the most used name in the world. We live in the year of our Lord. He's the one that rules these kingdoms, sets up kings, takes them down. His kingdom lasts forever. It's just amazing the ignorance that I was and the ignorance that people have today. That they think that Daniel is for us. The abomination of desolation. Jesus said, whenever you see the abomination of desolation, Look up for your redemption draws nigh. Know that it's nigh even at the doors. You know? And their house was left unto them desolate. Jesus said, your house will be left unto you desolate. And when you see that abomination that Daniel spoke of, 
that it's here, that this is the time. Get out of Judea, flee into the mountains. They did that whenever the war came. Daniel is old. It's an old prophecy. Whenever you hear people trying to put anything in Daniel for our day, it's ridiculous. Whenever Jesus went up to heaven, what happened? Uh, Michael the archangel fought the dragon, kicked Satan out of heaven, and now has come salvation in the kingdom of our Lord and the power of his Christ. Jesus said he was going away. He wouldn't talk with them much, but he was going away to fight Satan. He said, now was the time that the prince of the world should be cast out. So we see that Michael the archangel fought against the dragon, kicked him out of heaven. Now has come salvation in the power of our God, and, or the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. Then, whenever Satan was kicked out, under the six seals, Satan was kicked out. The stars of heaven fell. The 144,000 were sealed up, and the great day of the Lord came, the great the wrath of the Lamb. They saw him in the cloud, 66 A.D. The dragon was cast down, chased them into the wilderness for 1,260 days, three and a half years. That's exactly what happened. From the time that the armies came for three and a half years, they were chased into the wilderness. They were in the mountains to the place prepared. Because the glory of God, the cloud that was over the temple, moved into the mountains, which it says in history from eyewitness accounts back then, that the glory of God moved from the temple up into the mountains. That's where they went. That was their place prepared where they would be nourished away from the serpent during the time that that war was happening. And Satan made war with the remnant of the seed that was still in Jerusalem. So we see that in Daniel at this time, at this time, Michael, your prince, will stand for the people and many that are asleep in the dust will rise, some to everlasting life and some to everlasting shame and contempt, right? So Daniel, again, for them, he clearly says the kingdoms that are coming. He clearly says the beasts back then. He clearly says them. Okay, he told you that they were Persia, Greece, Rome. He told you. He lived through some of it. It even changed hands during his time. So we know that it already happened. It's already done. Salvation came. The dead in Christ rose. They saw. Michael kicked him out of heaven. Now has come salvation. Now, <laughs> Daniel, Michael will stand for you. And in those days, many will awake. That was whenever Christ destroyed them. That was whenever he became king. 